set the scene. You've got a video in mind that you've always wanted to create. And if you close your eyes, you can almost envision how you want it to look and feel to bring your story to life. And to do that, you've just downloaded Luma Fusion on your smartphone or tablet, but you're just not quite sure how to get going. Well, we know working with a new tool can be a little bit of a daunting task, but trust us, once you get going with LumaFusion, there'll be no stopping you. And by the end of this video, you'll already be well on your way to kickstarting your editing journey on mobile. In this series, I'm going to show you the ins and outs of LumaFusion, and soon you'll be whizzing around in no time, creating things you never thought possible. So let's start from the very beginning and create our first project in LumaFusion. If you have your device with you, why not open up the app and follow along with me, pausing the video as and when you need. When you first install LumaFusion, the app will ask permission to access the media in your Photos app, your microphone and devices on your local network. These three things will enable you to take advantage of the features LumaFusion has to offer, like the ability to record a voiceover, for example, or export your content to your favourite wireless drive. We recommend you give LumaFusion unlimited access to the media in your Photos app, so you have easy access while editing. Note that whatever you decide to do at this stage, you can change your permissions in the Settings app on your mobile device at a future date. Once you've done that, you're ready to start your first project. So what exactly is that? Well, every video is made within what we call a project, and over time you'll build up an array of projects for the variety of videos you'll be editing. You might be working on one video at a time, or you might find yourself dipping in and out of them as you go. Your creativity can be endless here. One project could house a viral TikTok tutorial, another focused on a breaking news piece formatted for television audiences, and in another you might be making a short documentary or film for the big screen. So let's start a new project. You do this by tapping the plus icon in the center of the screen. If it's not your first time using the app, you'll start a new project for each video by tapping the plus icon at the bottom left. So from here, you'll get this pop-up where you can name your project by tapping in the gray horizontal box. We recommend you do this with each video you make so you can easily distinguish which is which. Use text or even emojis if you're feeling extra fancy. Once you've done that, cast your eye to the settings below. By default, LumaFusion matches the frame rate, aspect ratio and color space of your project with that of the first clip you place on the timeline, but if you'd like more control, you can alter them individually. If you're new to video editing, they might seem a bit confusing at first, but they are important depending on where your video is going to be published and the footage you'll be using to edit with. So let's take a closer look at them. The frame rate relates to the amount of frames per second that your clips are shot in. A clip shot in 25 frames per second, for example, means 25 individual images were captured by your camera in order to make up one second of video. If you don't know the frames per second rate of your footage, you can find this out on the camera you've been filming with. It's always best to match the frame rate of your project timeline to the frame rate of the clips you'll be editing. With that in mind, when shooting video, take into consideration where your video will be going when published. For example, television broadcasters using NTSC standards like the USA broadcast content exported at 30 frames per second, whereas the UK, who uses PAL standards, use 25 frames per second. The frame aspect ratio relates to the width by height size of your video, whether it will be portrait, landscape, square or a variety of others. 16 by 9 is landscape, 9 by 16 is vertical and 1 by 1 is square and many more. You can choose from a range of frame aspect ratios, but the main thing to think about here is where your video is going to end up and the dimensions of the footage you've already shot. The colour space refers to the fixed range of possible colours and luminance values that your footage was captured in, so those that are available to your camera. If you're shooting with a mobile device, with iOS 14.1 and above, you can access 10-bit HDR workflows in LumaFusion, which means you have over a billion colours to work with when editing. This means you'll be editing with brighter, more vivid images, with whiter whites and darker blacks. When you've gone through these settings and chosen the preferred options for your project, or of course simply left them as they were, tap the plus icon in the right hand corner of the pop-up box to enter your editing timeline. 
So here we are in a brand new project. Once you've started a new project in LumaFusion, you'll see the apps interface, which is split up into three core sections. The media library, which shows media and content that can be added to your project, such as images, footage, and music. The timeline, where you'll actually edit your project. This is where all of your hard work takes place. And the preview screen, which enables you to actually view your work as you edit. Now we've seen how we can set the frame aspect ratio, frames per second and color space of our project when we're starting a fresh one. But at any point during the editing process, it's important to know you can alter the settings of the project by tapping the settings cog in the bottom right and casting your eye to the current project settings under the settings tab. Here you can see the frame rate, aspect ratio and color space can be changed if you need to at any point. Below, we can change the project background color, which will default to black as it will run throughout your entire project. But if you want to change this, say if you've got a specific brand color, or you just want to brighten up your project, you can do so here using the grid, spectrum of colors, or sliders. It goes without saying that the more you edit, the more acquainted you'll be with these settings every time you edit, and they'll soon become second nature to you.